Hello techies, welcome back to Tech Qualities. Today we are reviewing a keyboard replacement on a Dell Latitude 5320. Thanks for checking in today. Um, please like and subscribe this video if it's helpful to you. All right, let's get started. Here's the new keyboard we're gonna be replacing. Uh, your Latitude 5320, like most other models, unfortunately you're going to have to remove everything from the inside. I'm going to show you a couple tips and tricks and shortcuts uh, that'll save you some time in doing this. You don't have to disconnect all components, so pay attention to uh, what we do here. Uh, go ahead and get your screws removed. Pry, pry the bottom cover off with your favorite plastic spudger tool. I'm using a screwdriver here, but be careful if you use a metal screwdriver because if you don't do it right, you can cause some damage. Disconnect your battery. Remove the four screws from the battery and remove it from the chassis. We're going to remove our two ribbon cables there, touch pad, and your LED light cable there. We're going to remove the speaker cable from the left. We're going to start to remove all the anchor screws from the perimeter of the motherboard. Got a couple on the left there. There's a couple along the top. This next one is your EDP cable mount that holds that in place. I'm going to take that bracket out there. You got three screws on the right side bracket, you remove those three screws, remove the bracket. Looks like I forgot one in the middle there. I'll find out real quick that I forgot one. And then you got one on the lower right, a couple along the lower side of the motherboard. take note here that uh, we're not removing the Wi-Fi card, we're not removing the hard drive, All right, we're not removing the heat sink. Those can stay intact because we're going to anchor the entire thing up and over the top to expose the keyboard frame which is directly under the motherboard. We do have to, most cases you got to remove your fan screws because those go through to the palm rest. Just got to expose a little bit, move the, the uh, cabling out of the way. Okay, with those screws out now, see, I'm going to start to use my pry tool here to kind of lift up and see if I can get the motherboard free. Those ports on the right side there, those are your lightning ports, and those go, those kind of protrude through the side of the palm rest and the port, the portholes that are on the side of your palm rest. And I can't quite get it out far enough, so I have to go back and remove my uh, display cables. Once I remove those, then I, I'll get a little bit more maneuverability with the motherboard. Yeah, give it another try once I get those cables out. You can see the on the top right side there, the motherboard is anchored in a little bit by that right side hinge. So I have to maneuver it a little bit to get it free of that right side hinge. Use my pry tool here to kind of move it down a little. Once I get it past that, then the whole thing comes out. So you see we're gonna take that and just anchor it up over the top there. So we can expose all of the, what we're looking at here is the bottom side, it's the keyboard frame assembly. I have to move all of these little flaps out of the way to expose the screws that are holding that in place. So I go around and I, I kind of fold it back over each screw. Careful to make sure I get them all. And then we're gonna remove those screws. Remember to manage your screws. Um, 
make sure you have enough table space here. Make sure your screws are all staying organized on the table. It always helps when you're reassembling, you know, which, uh, which screws go to which location. As you can see, these screws are much smaller than your keyboard anchor screws or other screws that you've taken out previously. So make sure you're doing some good screw management on the tabletop around you. You're going to remove your keyboard ribbon cable and your keyboard backlight ribbon cable. And I'm just going to gently pry up with my pry tool. Move your touchpad ribbon cable out of the way. You can see I missed a screw here, so I'm going to take one more out. So uh, that screw there is actually for your touchpad, so no need to remove those. And I'm seeing that uh, my speaker cable kind of goes up under this weird management. I don't see this too often, so this is kind of a rare model where they decided to cable manage that speaker cable up and over the <laughs> keyboard frame. Got to remove these stickies here and get the cable out of the way. more prying. Got a couple little sticky flaps that go down over your touchpad. Those are okay. Up in the top left here I'm seeing that the um, power button uh, it does sit on top of the top left side of your keyboard frame. So I'm going to remove the single screw out of the power button and pry that up out of the way. Set it aside because we'll put it back in when we're reassembling. This little rubber grommet here for cable management is sitting, it's got some adhesive on there, so I peel that off. And I think we're probably in the clear now, and up it comes, so flip that over and there's our keyboard. So now your keyboard in most cases is always screwed into the, uh, the keyboard um, frame. We're going to remove all the screws that are holding that in place. Whatever laptop you're working on, you're going to carefully review. Some, some of the screws are sit between the keys, some of them are along the top of the keyboard. In this case, we had about four screws holding it in place there. So I'm going to bring in the new keyboard and just start reversing your, your process to reassemble everything. Placing all of our keyboard frame screws here. As I'm making the rounds on the board here, I want to point out that one of these screws I put in should not be put in at this stage, is that one right there. Right below the keyboard, or right below the power button. The one I put in for the power button is good, but the one right below it you don't want to put in. I had to go back and remove that side of the keyboard because the motherboard that sits on top of that screw hole. It requires a screw and that'll, the motherboard screw will go through and fill that hole. So just make a side note of that. Now we're going to carefully anchor the motherboard back in place. 
being careful not to pinch any cables or wires and we're going to look to see that all of our holes align properly. See I was uh, struggling a little bit to get some of these screw holes aligned. Want to make sure that your ports, your C lightning ports on the right side go properly into the holes on the side of the frame. Once I get them aligned up, I'm going to return screws to the fan. Putting all my perimeter screws back into the motherboard. That's the one I, I had to cut and go out and remove the motherboard a little bit to remove that screw that I put in underneath. Now it goes in properly. That's how I realized I put a screw in where it didn't belong with the keyboard frame. And once I get that one in, I'm gonna you know, I'm reapplying that fan screw again because I had to go back and undo that. Replacing our video connectors, this one pushes straight down on, and your other EDP type connector is uh, use the little uh, fold down bracket. It slides straight in, sliding it towards the top of the picture there. Make sure that it's flush, and uh, return your little bracket that holds in your display connector. Turn your right side bracket and three screws. And you're going to return your LED cable to the motherboard connector touchpad ribbon ribbon connector and often a much forgotten couple of connectors your key your new keyboard connectors is your backlight and your keyboard ribbon cable forget many times to connect those I put the battery in and boot up the laptop and realize that the keyboard doesn't light up and it doesn't work uh, so I have to go back in and remove the battery and redo these so I just remember remember to get those connectors done now we're going to reconnect our speaker on these kinds of connectors, notice a little white dot indicates which side goes up. Saves you some time trying to figure out if it's upside down or right side up. And our last two anchor screws on the bottom side of the motherboard there. Just doing some finishing cable management touch-ups. Reinstall the battery, four screws, and reconnect your battery. Reapply the bottom cover. That wraps this one up. Guys, please like and subscribe. 
We're adding new videos every day on different model laptops. Thank you for joining us and have a wonderful day.